FTA Annual Report Training. I am Lillian Lowry, and I am a new member of the SSBCI team. So I just wanted to say hello, uh, welcome you to this training and introduce myself. You're going to be seeing my face and name uh, through communications with our programs. Um, we will be covering today, uh, next slide please, uh, what the report is, when it is due, who needs to submit it, how to access, complete, and submit it, and we'll give you some resources and take your questions towards the end. To get it started, I would like to introduce Carmen Reed. Carmen. Thank you, Lillian, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Carmen Reed, as Lillian said, and for those of you that don't, don't know me, and I will be providing a bit of background information today on the annual report, <clears throat> excuse me, before my colleagues Grace and Jay dive into the template and portal submission process. Um, I'll start briefly by reviewing what the annual report is and the basic information that it includes. TA grant recipients are required to submit an annual TA project progress and outcomes report with cumulative information on an annual basis as it is outlined in the SSBCI TA Grant Program Reporting Guidance, which hopefully you have all read. As with the semi-annual reporting, information collected through this report will be submitted through the Treasury portal to meet these annual reporting requirements. This is the same portal that you have used for your application. And if you are submitting your, if you have submitted your um, uh, semi-annual report, it's the same report portal that you used for that. Um, so broadly, the report has data fields for recipients to report on certain data categories, including provider data, eligible beneficiary data, TA services data, and classroom style services data. Grace will go over the specifics of what you will be reporting on each of these data categories when she reviews the template. You'll see that it closely monitors what was published in the reporting guidance. So it should reflect the data that you've been collecting already. Additionally, recipients must submit a brief narrative update on their TA plan that describes how the grant implementation is processing, including updates on the structure and offerings of the TA services if they have changed from the original TA plan submission. In this overview, in his overview of the portal, Jay will outline where to upload this document. Next slide. So now let's review when annual reports are due to Treasury. The first reporting period on the federal, um, the first awarding period starts on the, fe the federal award date as it is specified in the TA grant agreement. And it ends on March 31st. After that first reporting period, all reports will cover the 12 month period from April 1st to March 31st of the following year. Annual reports are due to Treasury by April 30th, following the end of the reporting period. That is, they are due the same day as the semi-annual report, and you have 30 days following the end of the reporting period to complete and report the data for that period. If the deadline falls on a federal holiday or a weekend, the deadline will be the following business day. See the table on this slide for current and the, for the current and next two reporting periods and some those and the associated submission deadlines. Again, the submission deadline for this reporting period is April 30th, 2024. Next slide. <clears throat> the SSBCI TA Grant Program Reporting Guidance states that recipients must submit an annual report to Treasury for the first partial reporting period following the execution of the grant award agreement and annually thereafter until the end of the period of performance. The one exception to this is that grants awarded fewer than 30 calendar days prior to the end of their annual reporting period, March 31st, will not be required to submit an annual report for that period, but will need to include the data from that period in the next annual report submission. So what that means is that all recipients with a countersigned agreement date of February 29th, 2024, or before, are required to submit an annual report by, April, by the April 30th deadline. The annual TA project progress and outcomes report template will be available in the portal once it opens for submission. Once the form has been completed, you should upload, certify, and submit the report within the submission window. This window generally begins the first day after the end of each reporting period and is open for 30 days. 
The submission fin window for the reporting period ending May March 31st, 2024 will open on April 1st, 2024. Next slide. <clears throat> Finally, let's talk about who can access and submit the annual report. There are three roles within the Treasury portal and, we, and they all have a role in accessing and submitting the annual report. These roles are specific to SSBCI TA. So if you have them established for your capital application, you'll need to assign them for this application. The account administrator is able to view and download the template. The account point of contact is able to view and download the template as well as upload the report. And the authorized representative is able to do both of these things. And then they are also able to certify and submit the report. If someone other than this SSBCI TA authorized representative navigates to the certification and submission page, they'll see a message that only the authorized representative may submit. Please note that the authorized representative role, as it is listed on the slide, is a role within the SSBCI reporting portal and is not necessarily the same as the authorized official that you have listed on your application. And I believe that is all of my slides and I'll pass it over to Grace.